said to you, before we were come to physical form, we had the form of uh, in the womb, and before that when our soul was created, we have a uh, teaching that says all the souls have affirmed that the Creator created them. Am I not your Lord? And they said yes. Right. So, and then we come to physical form where we're given a, a yeah. free will. So it's innately, we, we believe the fitrah. Explain so, the fitrah to him. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree with that point as well? That you can come to the conclusion there is a creator without religious scripture? So what I think, yeah, I think it comes come to that conclusion. To... I wouldn't okay. necessarily agree that I would think that way. But I can you wouldn't I... agree? That, that you wouldn't agree that the, the, the evidence is, is, is forcing that conclusion upon you? You wouldn't agree with that? I, I think that's, there's a theory that people could see it that way. Theory I, I that can about, be right or wrong? Yeah, I know about the, the, mm. the, what is it, the, the clock, the watchmaker theory, about how intricate the world is, how well designed. That it would make sense there would be a person that designed it, or a being. That's, that's the teleological argument, but it's not the argument that I'm going to be making. There's okay. other arguments as well. Sure. But I'm saying, because the proofs for, Allah, for God's existence, or Allah's existence, Allah is just the Arabic word for God, yeah. are not uh, restricted to the teleological argument, right? Okay. There's other evidences and other arguments. And these arguments combined are absolute proof in my, in my position, right? In my, in my, and I know a lot of people hate this word absolutely or for sure or truth, but the reality is everyone holds something to be absolutely true. Whether that's Allah's existence or something else, right? So I believe the evidences that are out there are absolute proof within themselves to, to make you come to the conclusion that there is a creator. For instance, we can, we can talk about one of the arguments. Like, the universe has a beginning, has a start. Do you agree? No, not necessarily. Okay, so the universe doesn't have a beginning. No, I don't, I don't see how you can prove that it does. Many, many, many ways you can prove it, it does. For example, all the scientific evidences that we have today that pointed us to the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, which but what, what was before then? Like, it's very possible that the yeah. Big Bang is a recurring thing. I'll answer that around. point. I'll answer. It's okay, a very common point that. now. I just answered it last week, maybe, or the week before. It's a very common point. Look, just coming back to, to what I'm saying, yeah? The universe, you're saying, has a start, but we don't know whether there was a start before it, similar to that start that was there, right? Yeah. Which is the cycle, a cycle of universes coming into existence. I just think that like the ideas of time and innate existence are so unknowable from our current perspective mm. that there's no way of saying it started here or it ends there. Like it's beyond our comprehension at the moment. Even if the universe, okay, it let could me easily be kind of going round in circles. No, or on the next question, what do you hold? Does it have a starting point or it doesn't have a starting point, or, or you don't know? What, uh, is, it's a binary I, question I, I, of like, okay, either okay. yes or no. I guess I, I don't know. I don't okay, know. okay. So, for the sake of the argument, even though I can demonstrate now that it has a beginning, I will take your position and I will say to you, even if you believe it's, it's eternal, you will require still to believe in the Creator. Why? The universe is eternal, you say, yeah? The universe is composed of, of parts, correct? These parts are arranged in a certain way. Who arranged them in that way? Why are they not arranged in a different way? They require an external explanation from outside themselves, whether they were eternal or they were not eternal, to the way that they are arranged right now. Also, they have restrictions, the physical restrictions. Who placed these restrictions upon that? Anything which has a restriction requires an external explanation telling you who placed the restriction upon that thing. Okay, I mean so even if you wanted to believe it's eternal, I can still through the existence of the universe by itself prove that there must be something other than it, right? always existing and place these kind of restrictions and place these kind of yeah, always 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 interrupting us <laughs> always i don't know what to do man <laughs> so do you get the point right yeah. so whether you believe it has a beginning which i believe like every physicist major physicist today believe based on the on the the radiations that we have left of the of the expansion of the big bang Based on, on uh, a law, uh, the, one of the laws of physics, which is that the energy cannot be created or destroyed within a closed system, which means that the universe is closed. It's a closed system. Who, play, who closed that system, right? It's a closed system. And it means that there was a st uh, it's expanding as well. The evidence is the universe is expanding, which is redshifting that we can observe. We can see the wavelength of the galaxy stretching, which means that there was a point where it started stretching from, right? That's why almost every major physicist today believes that the universe has a beginning. Now whether it has or it doesn't have, that's the point I'm making. Whether you want to believe it has or it doesn't have, you still have to deal with the fact that there is an external explanation. You cannot have an infinite radius of 
external explanation. Therefore, you have to concur that there is an always existing explanation that explains everything else. Do you agree with that? If not, tell me why not. That's a lot of words, man. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you understand. <laughs> the yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. No, there are yeah. clearly like laws of nature at play, and so innate patterns and everything. But I don't. I, I think that could come from somewhere else other than a creator. I, I don't mind, but I said the point I was making, if it comes from something else, if that something else also has, has restrictions and, and, and uh, it organize, it's arranged in a certain way, then it will require an ex another explanation. If it doesn't, then that's whom we refer to as a creator. Something that does not have restrictions, something that has always existed. So either way, you have to concur. There is something out there that is not, doesn't have restrictions upon it and it's always existing. Some people refer to it as the necessary being, etc. Yeah? I don't like to use that term. But that's the, that's the necessary conclusion. It's a necessary being is a necessary conclusion. That's what I was saying to you. It's a necessary conclusion. It's not a maybe yes or no theory. Because there is nothing to, rebuke that, to refute that point. Our existence today is absolute proof that there is something that is always existent eternal and that placed restriction on the universe that we're in. So why do you think that a creator would have to be eternal, whereas the universe had to come from somewhere? Because couldn't you ask the same question about the creator itself? Yeah, now, now that's a very common question of who created God. A very, these questions are very old questions, you know. Who created God? We explain that. That if God has a creator, i.e. explanation, then that explanation of God will also require an explanation ad infinitum. Therefore, nothing will exist. But if something exists today, is proof that there is a starting point. Something that has no beginning. Something that has no end, no restrictions. And that's the creator. So you have the problem of infinite regression. Yeah. 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 So, so therefore, you... To get out of that, you God has to not to get out of that, to, to, that to because we exist, yeah. it's proof already yeah. that there is something. Because either way, nothing can exist. Because I will need you to create me to create. He will need you. He, you will need etc. So I will never create because no one will ever create him and no one will ever create you at infinitive. You get the point? Yeah. So our existence, anything existence, if anything exists and has limitations, is proof of God's existence. Look, it's a simple argument. Yeah, It's not a hard argument. Anything that exists is proof of God's existence. The point is this. Are you sincere enough to accept that reasoning, which is absolute reasoning? It doesn't have any holes in it. Or are, do you have a personal problem why you don't believe in God? Because I, I've come across a lot of people, been doing this for a long time, yeah? And people, not everyone is, is, does, really has a rational problem with the existence of God. A lot of people have emotional issues with the existence of God, have previous bad experiences with religious issues. Therefore, they, they want to use these as excuses to push away the, the point that whether God exists or not. Now, I don't know your position, I'm not making judgment on you, but I'm saying this is my experience with the people. So I'm asking both of you right now, does that seem, does that seem fair? Does the argument seem fair? Does it make sense? No, I, don't care. Good? Um, I don't think it quite does, to be honest. I, I think both of us will be very happy oh, yeah. Yeah. if there was a God, you know, it's great. We've got eternal life and there's an order to things. Eternal can be good or bad. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, no sure. Oh, is this early, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so... I definitely don't have a personal problem with God existing. I think okay. Kieran probably find the same way. Like, we'd be happy. Do you agree that the, the, the reasoning is valid? Not really, to be honest. Tell me why not. Well, I think I'll be honest with you. A lot of people, I, both of you, yeah. yeah. I'll be honest. I come across a, a lot of people, yeah. I give a reasoning that is valid. Then they say, I disagree. I say, why do you disagree? They don't have an answer. So are you disagreeing based on what I said? If you are, Tell me so you can discuss that point. Okay. What is what is invalid in the reasoning that I used? I don't know enough about astrophysics to be able to tell you exactly why. <laughs> That's not astrophysics does. though. No, in cosmology, you mean? I know there's arguments about like matter and dark matter and how they existed and how the universe came into being. But I said even if we believe it's eternal, sorry to cut you. Even if we believe it's eternal, you don't have to deal with the argument whether it has. I said even if it's eternal, it's arranged in a certain way. It has restrictions. Therefore, it requires an external explanation. Believe it's eternal, it's up to you, man. Yeah. You want to believe it's eternal, you don't want to believe it's eternal. But in the end, you still face to that conclusion. You, n you have not escaped the argument. You get the point I'm trying yeah. to make? Yeah, I mean, I certainly think it is a possibility, but... but again, we're using the term but, possibility. <laughs> yeah, but again, it's, um, it's still a theory which I haven't seen enough evidence for to accept that I think it's likely. Okay, now... As one of, one of many theories. Okay, now there's two issues here. First issue is the following, yeah? When you say it's a theory, do you believe that ever anything is certain? 
both of you. Tough question. question from both of you. Because I'm talking to two people, you know? <laughs> ah. That's deep philosophical shit. Uh, <laughs> okay, there's two, two options. There is something which is certain. Yeah. There is nothing certain. Okay, yeah, th there are some things that are certain. Like? Like your uh, existence? Yeah, like we're gonna die at least from this physical body. And we certain, exist. You example. exist as well. You, I'm talking yeah. to something right now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. That certain thing is proof that God exists. And that's the point I was making. If you're certain in your existence, then by default you must be certain in God's existence. Because you exist, right? You're limited, you're arranged in a certain way, therefore you require an explanation outside yourself. Simple. No, but we can be arranged in a certain way based on the innate patterns of the universe. We don't need an external creator to uh, The universe that. itself is arranged in a certain way. Yeah, but that's that, the point I'm making. That, that, how, so if you, claim, if you claim in the, the, uh, the universe arranged something, I'm saying the universe itself. Universe is not an entity which exists, yeah? Universe is whatever in the universe. And whatever in the universe is arranged in a certain way. That's what makes up the, the universe, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like you, you're composed of parts and you, you're arranged in a certain manner, right? Similarly, the universe is this. Universe is just something composed of different things arranged in a certain manner. Therefore, by default, the universe requires an external explanation. If you believe, I'm putting it this way, if you believe anything is certain, you have to believe in God. If you don't believe anything is certain, you'll contradict yourself. Because you're saying nothing is certain, that statement is certain. And that's self-refuting. So either way, you have to accept the existence of God. I think there's just quite a big jump from Tell saying... me why not. Why? Why is it a big jump? There's a big jump in your reasoning. Tell me. Saying that uh, the, the universe is arranged in a certain way, therefore there must be a creator. Why? I didn't say that. I said, therefore, there must be an explanation. Okay. And I said an explanation cannot keep requiring other explanations. You will have to have something which is not limited because any limitation will infer an explanation. You need who limited that thing. Why is it limited? You need to explain to me why, right? So the point is, by default, you have to accept something which has no limitations, always existing. So when you, what he's telling you is everything within the universe is contingent upon something. You can't have Even I don't use the word continuum yeah. because I give, but it's similar to what you're saying. Yeah. I use, I use, I call it argument from explanation, right? Yeah. That things require an explanation external to themselves, yeah. right? I don't even call it necessarily dependent or contingent or in the, because that's the argument of contingency, right? I use, I use more explanation, right? By the way, there is a whole range of different arguments, you know? So many, ar that's why I was saying to, that's why I was saying to him, that's why I was saying to him, uh, that there is a range of arguments that lead us to that conclusion. It's not like that I'm just using one argument, right? There's multiple range of different arguments. Whatever way, whichever way you would want to go, you're forced to accept the fact and the reality. That's why the biggest philosophers, they believed in something out there. They had to accept that fact. Because when they reasoned within their minds, they realized that you, by necessity, would have to accept that there is something just by existing in this world. Just by being here, it's proof that there was something in the beginning that is not restricted. So I believe it's very illogical. I believe no rational person who really looks deeply into that topic and really thinks about these issues will come to the conclusion that God doesn't exist except if he has another issue other than logic. With all due respect to obviously all the atheists out there, right? In respect, we haven't asked him that view of whether you said you met many people that don't accept. Oh, yeah, yeah. What about you? Yeah, he said. You said, but he said when he spoke, he said he said he also doesn't have an issue. No, he didn't speak. Do you agree with with what he said that you don't have the issue with the the issue the issue with the creator? I said we meet a lot of people who have an issue, which is not really logical, right? He said no. His issue is not is he's he's not he doesn't have any baggage that is stopping him from believing. What about you? Uh, no, I, I'd, I'd be very happy if it was all true, if there was a God and a Creator. Okay, okay. I'm telling you there is, yeah, you should be happy now. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I'm, just, yeah I'm just joking. So, yeah, no, yeah. I, okay. I, I prefer for your explanation to be true than mine. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you haven't given me an explanation though. Well, I, I don't have an explanation. So, I, I so because you said other than mine, so that assumes that there is a, an well, alternative explanation. I still have that. So you can, you can, can you give me an alternative to what I said? The thing is, like, you know, we're not astrophysicists, we don't know everything. Neither am I. I know, but <laughs> Neither am I. What, what I'd say a lot of religious people are doing is because they don't know the answer to the big questions. They're kind of making a bit of a jump of faith. Like, oh, I don't understand it. Therefore, I think that's what you're making with all the respect. Okay. But I, I think, I think that the atheists, they, they have science of the gap. I'm not an atheist, I'm an agnostic. Remember? No, I'm saying atheist specifically. Okay. Atheists, you might be using the same, the same thing. 
You're I'm not talking about me though, because I'm sure, not an atheist. Sure, sure. I'm not, I'm, that's why I didn't say you specifically. Yeah. But I said there is something that they use, which is called science of the gaps, or, or, moreover, I don't know of the gaps. Because I don't know is not an answer. Do you agree? Reality is, reality is you have one of two answers. Whether you exist, whether you exist, or you don't exist. God exists or God doesn't exist, right? If you say, I don't know, that's not a third category of answering. That's just you saying that you don't know which one of them, yeah. which position of them, sure. right, to take. So we're saying, in the end, one of these positions must be the truth. Yeah. And I don't know is just a gap to avoid answering that question. Do you get the point I'm trying to make? Yeah. So that's why I don't know does not really solve the issue. But I, I believe that no humans really have the authority to know or not know fully. Why do you believe that? Because we don't have enough evidence. Why? Well, I just giving you. I'm, I'm just I'm just presenting evidence. Which is, do you believe? Okay, when you say evidence, that's, that's, that was the second point I wanted to mention. I said there's two points. Second point I wanted to mention is this: What do you define as evidence? Why? What would convince you of God's existence? It's a good question. I, can I tell you your answer? I don't know. But I'll let you say. <laughs> I'll let you, I, I'm predicting what you're gonna say. That's a cheeky. But I'll let you. Look, through experience, I have found this I don't know of the gaps. Yeah? It's very popular with it. When you ask, look, when you present evidence, they say there is not enough evidence. When you ask for a criteria of evidence, they say I don't know. Okay, so how can we have a discussion? Then? When you're dealing with something... Well, let me answer the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Answer yeah. that question. Yeah. I, I think what when, would convince you the question is? Like, what, what sort well, of well, first I just want to say, like, when you're dealing with issues like so big, you can jump in as well if you like. I, I think saying I don't know is, is the rational thing. I, I, I think it, it's not like I've got an answer, you don't. It's like I don't believe either of us should have an answer. Unless, I, I suppose, maybe you've had a personal experience with God or something. No, I don't use that. Okay. This, this is a Christian that's, that's argument. It's okay. a Christian <laughs> argument, not a Muslim argument. <laughs> right. You're a wrong person. Right. What about you? I believe, by the way, it's based on evidence. And so we don't use uh, uh, addicts. Uh, By the way, experience is, is there. Experience is there. Experience but it's not used as an evidence uh, in isolation. It's the point I'm making, yeah? I have many experiences. Every Muslim has experience, right? But I don't use my experiences as proof. Because you would say that's a personal experience, that's you. You didn't have my experience to know or to use it as evidence as well, right? So I would use something objective with you, something that we both agree with. You have a rational faculty, you can come to rational com conclusions. I'm sure we both agree on that, right? Again, coming back to the question that, that we, don't need, we need an answer for. What is the evidence that would convince someone that whether God exists or not? Yeah, well, I was saying, like, for me, having a personal experience with God... We, should, we don't know. A big jump there. You're basically, you're saying we don't know. I didn't say that. You said to me, we <laughs> shouldn't have a positive... You shouldn't say... You shouldn't have an answer for the question. Which is basically, I know or I don't know. That's what you said. Correct? No, but you said, what would persuade me that God exists? And yeah. I was saying, if I saw something clear with my own eyes, like, you know... That so that would convince you? That God exists. Yeah, like, so. like what? Like what? Yes. Like what? You said clearly see something. What? What? Like what? Give an example. I mean, it would have to be something totally different from anything I've experienced so far. Something of a spiritual you have any, dimension. Do you have any examples in your mind? I'm, I'm not going to like pick out an example of like a god coming out of the sky. Because it's just going to make me sound not, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is that. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm not putting words into your mouth, right? I'm asking you which which example yeah. would you would find convincing. Well, I, I don't know what's not clear about that. Like, if there was something spiritual, like some kind of vision, something extrasensory, God coming into the sky, and apparition okay. of Jesus. Okay, what about you? Something like this. Yeah, so, so is what he said. Same so, thing. So something which couldn't be explained, which surely can be explained by any <laughs> measurements or understanding that we have currently. I would have to say there's some kind of external factor, something that we don't understand, some okay. higher power. Okay, good, doing. good. Let me use your premise, your premises. Okay, first, vision, hearing, five sensors are based on what? Induction. Induction can be can be manipulated and deceived. Do you agree? You can see something. You can be hallucinating. You can have a, a drug. You can you can see even when you draw. When you draw for too long, you have to remove the painting and come back because your your own vision deceives you. Yeah. So vision is not a criteria because it's not it's not something absolute. And Allah says in the Quran, which is very beautiful, even if there is a, 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 a we we give them a stairs up to heaven, they would say 
uh, we, our eyes have been dazzled. This is magic, man. This is not true. I was just maybe had a drug. I was hallucinating. I've not seen this heaven and earth. So it will not convince you. So the Quran gives Why? A clear, clear answer. A clear answer to that to that objection, right? If it I says, saw a staircase going up to heaven, I think it would convince me. No, Allah, Allah doesn't only say if you saw a staircase. Yeah. Allah says if you went up the staircase and saw heaven and hellfire with your own eyes, yeah. you would still say afterwards, Oh, did that, that doesn't happen? Did they happen? Though, I was I'm telling you, I, I was I was dreaming. I was dreaming. Maybe that was an hallucination. Maybe it was some drugs. Maybe that, that this is X. Maybe that is Z. So it would not be a conclusive evidence because it has deficiencies within it. It's number one. Number two, why did you restrict evidences to only empiricism? Yeah. Only what, sorry? Say that again. Sorry. Why did you restrict proof to the five senses? is empiricism because why did you save the world isn't it? that's incorrect no we have a lot of other ways of reaching conclusions which is not empirical where are you from uh, from london southeast london you're from here originally yeah? yeah have you been to china yeah you've been there you've been to uh, to the middle east uh yeah which part uh palestine palestine what else uh where else free palestine yeah free palestine come, come back yeah uh, turkey yeah. jordan Egypt, okay. So, what about uh, what about what about what what about what about Sudan? Have you been there? No, I love to go. What about you? Like, where do you love to go? Sudan. I was speaking. But how do you know Sudan exists? Oh, well, because I haven't been there. Is that what you're trying there's to say? There's no empiricism. How do you know Sudan exists? If you didn't apply your five empiricism, where are you gonna go if there is no Sudan? Okay. I'm asking a question. Do we only come to conclusions? If, if what the statement you made was true, you wouldn't believe that there is Sudan to begin with. Okay. Well, you wouldn't say I would go to Sudan because you wouldn't believe there is a Sudan because you've never been there. <laughs> I guess there's such a massive consensus evidence that Sudan does exist. Ah, uh, so testimony. So when there, is, when there is a large number of testimony, that's a valid source of, of information, correct? So it's not only empiricism. If there's evidence to back it up, yeah. What evidence are there to back up that Sudan is there? There's lots of videos and pictures of How do you know that Sudan? They're just saying it's Sudan. It could be taken in Egypt. My brother is just can say one conversation. Sorry. How do you know that this is really Sudan? They told you Sudan, you just believe it. It's testimony again. You're proving my point. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, someone has just drawn lines on a map and given it a flag, so... No, but there is a land which has borders that are called Sudan. There's a point yeah. we're making. You believe that. Yeah. You believe it's people called Sudanese, yeah? They live there. You believe they have the language, they speak Arabic, yeah? yeah? You believe these things. So my point is, you believe that based on testimony. When you take the bus, you take the bus home or the train? Tube or the bus? Okay, when you take the bus, do you, do you have empirical evidence that the bus driver is a, is a qualified bus driver? This is a life and death matter, yeah? He could crash you, kill you, yeah? Do you have empirical evidence that he's a, he's a qualified bus driver? I guess not completely. Not at all, I would say. You just have... You don't even meet the, you never met the guy in your life. <laughs> you just go on the bus, uh, uh, use your oyster card and sit down. Correct? You assume, based on the testimony of the council, that they have training courses and they hire people qualified for the jobs that they do. Sure. That's an assumption that you have based on no observations or evidence. And that's a life and death matter. But when it comes to God, you don't apply consistency. When it comes to testimony, that's the point I'm trying to make. Now, testimony is a valid source of knowledge. It's not only empirical senses. So why did you restrict it to that? Not only that, we also use uh, induction and deduction to know things. Like when you're coming outside of the house, you see drops of water, you assume, you know that there is, it was raining. Ra uh, water everywhere on, on the road, you, it was raining. You have not, you were not there when it was raining. You did not empirically see it, but you deduct it based on the after effect that it leaves, right? So reasoning, deduction, mathematics, one plus one equals two, all of these things we use as valid sources of knowledge other than the empirical senses. So it's not fair to say, I just need it to be empirical evidence. And because empirical evidence is not proof, as I said, anyone can say, oh, I've not seen that, I was just dreaming. Therefore, Allah did not use something which is uh, weak. Allah has used something which is robust as evidence. Something that no one can say, you know what, oh, that maybe was a dream, was a hallucination. No, Allah gave you a reasoning, evidence based on reasoning that, are rob that is robust. Therefore, no one can come later on and say, oh, there is a hole here or there is a hole there. Right? That's why Allah says in the Quran, they say, uh, They said, 
would Allah speak to us directly? Vision, yeah, speak to us in the dream. Or a sign comes to us. You know how Allah responds? He said that the people who came before them said the same thing. Look, by the way, the Quran, if you read it, it will tell you your psychology. I know your psychology through the Quran. The atheist I speak with, or the agnostic, or etc., anyone who doesn't believe in God. Their psychology I found in the Quran. Then Allah responds that by, we have made the signs clear for people who have certainty. Allah is saying the signs are there, they're clear, they're deductive reasoning and arguments, which are robust, proven, have no holes within them. But if the person is sincere, right? If the person is really sincere about believing God, he's saying, oh, it would be good. It's easy to say it would be good. If, it was, if you were really sincere with yourself, you would take a step if the reasoning makes sense and valid, right? You would not say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, if something makes sense. Because every day, on a daily basis, as, as I have shown, you use that reasoning and, and even in life and death matters. But when it comes to God, no, there is a completely different criteria. So you don't say, we cannot know for sure if that bus driver is really a qualified bus driver or not. Therefore, I'm not going to take the bus. You don't use the, the same reasoning. You assume, right, based on the testimony that is out there, that he's qualified and you live your life based on that. But why, why the double standards when it comes to God? Why the inconsistency? Like, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with Sudan not existing, but all over the world people have got different religious points. Because they accept testimony. They don't say only empiricism is a valid source of reasoning. They accept testimony. Like you believe your father is your father based on testimony. You have not done a DNA test, but you, see, you absolutely believe your father is your father. Do you see the point? So you apply that reasoning in your life. But why when it comes to God you don't? Because there's lots of different contrasting testimonies. Okay, now we go to that. But first, we, we agree that there is a consistent reasoning, proof, logical, that there is a creator out there. Then we can go to these religions, because that's a different argument now. Which religion is true? Which religion is true is not the same argument as whether God exists or not. Because no. he was making the point yeah. at the beginning, right? You can believe in God even if you're not following religion, right? We have deism, people who believe in, in a deity. They don't necessarily follow religion, right? So you can move them from, from your position to deism and then investigate as a sincere person. Like if someone shows me absolute evidences against Islam, proof that Islam is wrong. Like for example, the Quran makes a lot of challenges. The Quran says if it's not from God, you find in it many contradictions. If someone brings me a clear cut contradiction, I'll leave Islam man. Why? Because I cannot say this is from God and he, God himself said, if it's not from me, it will have contradictions. I would say God himself, he said, if there is a contradiction, it's not from me. Therefore, if there is a contradiction, how can I be a Muslim? The book itself is saying you can be. You get the point? So the Quran says challenges. And all of these challenges have been there for 1,400 years. The book has been preserved, the challenges have been there. It's not today we found these challenges and they've not been refuted. And every day you're willing to move where the truth is. Right? We, as Muslims, we don't just say we're born Muslims, we follow Islam. No, we investigate, we look at other religions, we have the rational discourse with people who are from our position, who are not from our position. You get the point? Then we come to conclusions. So a sincere person, when he looks at the reasoning, he would say, okay, that reasoning is valid. Therefore, the conclusion is valid. Until proven otherwise. Until proven otherwise, right? He'll say that conclusion is valid and he will take that position. Taking that position, investigating where is the truth. Because there is a lot of claims out there from religions. Okay, which religion is the correct religion? Who's, who has evidences for their claims, right? And I'll give you a beautiful criteria, which I believe you'd agree with me in. Four things. Four things must be present in... You see that that's why I'm saying there's a lot of uh, like annoying voices around, yeah? Okay. You shouldn't be doing it. I know, I know. The law. I okay, mean, I'll give you four, four points you can apply to any religious scripture to prove it's from God or not. A, the scripture has to claim it's from God. Because if it doesn't, why you're claiming it's from God if it didn't claim it's from God to begin with, right? Okay. Yeah. You agree? Okay. B, it has to be preserved. In order for you to know, in order for you to know what is really from God and what is not from God, the scripture has to be preserved because we don't know what humans added into it or humans didn't add into it. So it has to be intact, preserved in its language. Yeah? Number three, it has no errors or contradictions or mistakes. Because God, in the belief of religion, is all-knowing, all-wise. Does not make mistakes like humans, right? Number four, it has evidence supporting its miraculous nature. This is a very, uh, you like that point, yeah? Something, something which is against the laws of humans, which proves that it's coming from supernatural entity. Does that seem like a, fa seem like a fair criteria? I mean, I 
I haven't investigated the criteria, but yeah. If you no, I mean, do you agree with the points? That these points must be valid, or otherwise that scripture cannot be from God. Because well, if... I, it, mm. I, don't see, well, I don't see why it has to be preserved in its original language. I mean... If it's not preserved in its original language, when, it, when the minute you translate something from one language to another, you lose, you lose part of the meaning. No, I, I agree and, with you there. An interpretation goes into it. Yeah. It's difficult to prove that the Quran has never been changed or translated. Like maybe you're going to tell me that. But it's not difficult. It's unlikely. You know. It's not it's, difficult. It's been so long. Okay. Okay. But first, before I move there, which I can easily give you reasons and evidence of everything. Yeah. But before we move there, I want I want to build the foundation. Do we agree with the first point that we made, which is taking the position based on the reasoning that is out there that there must be something which is not limited, always exists and an explanation for the existence of the universe. No. If not, then why is really the point of moving to the second point? Do you get no, the point? We're not really going to agree with that, I think. But not based on logic, because you have not refuted it logically. Based on what are you refuting it? I just think you're You making... can choose to refute it, by the way, but I cannot force it on you. I'm yeah, not forcing sure. it on you. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just making it clear that if you refute it, would not be a logical refutation. It would be something else. It would be just a personal opinion, subjective opinion. I don't think so. Okay, so what is objectively there refuting my point? Well, I just think you're making, you're saying because we exist, God must exist. Because the universe exists in a closed system, there must be something outside it. But I don't think that really... No, it's not an argument I made. Let me make the argument again. That's what you said. Though. No problem, I'll make the argument again. But if you simplify it the way you did, you lose some of the points of the argument. That's why I said that's not the argument I made. Something exists. That something is arranged in a certain way and it has restrictions, right? Therefore, by necessity, it requires an explanation. I didn't say God, right? That's why I'm saying I didn't put it in that way. It requires an explanation, ex explanation external of itself. That explanation external of itself, right? Cannot keep having other explanations that are external of it. Because then we will have an infinite regression. We had an infinite regression. That thing which exists already would not exist. But if something's a system, it's self-contained. You know, you, you can look at a river and say, why does it flow because of gravity? And, you know, why is there gravity because of the force of the planet? And you know, it's a system. Okay, you will have to reach a circle. look. You're going back. It doesn't you, have to reach a specific no, no, point. But you you're, you're proving my point because you're going back. <laughs> you will have to keep going back. That's the point I'm making. You will have to look for the reason for the explanation for explanation for explanation for explanation yeah, very, and that cannot go ad infinitum that's the point because what you just said proves my point when minute you find an explanation you say oh you can find another explanation. you can but you cannot go this way ad infinitum by necessity there will have to be something which explains everything else because that thing has something external of itself explaining it right so that's the argument and the argument is the explanation must be now uh, another point must be something which is not restricted. I didn't use the word God, because people have connotations, and I don't use it anyways. I use Allah. Allah is a word which, which is, which is uh, uh, not restricted by gender, male, male or female. Allah is a word which is uniquely one, right? You cannot make the word in Arabic more than one or less than one. You cannot make it female and male. It's just one and gender neutral. That's why we use that word. Not like English, you can say goddess, God, right? So I don't use that term anyway. So that's why I didn't say God. I said an explanation must be there, something which explains, and it's not restricted. It doesn't have restrictions. So that's that's it. I say if we agree from there, we can move on. <laughs> but, but then you are going to another point, and then why is the other point? We're going to go in circles, but the point is the other point. No, leave yeah. the other yeah. point. Leave the other point. I said the first. No, no, no. That's no, the premise. You're Let's saying agree on that first point. It's not, rational too. We have to build premises in order yeah. for us to move forward. Okay. Yeah. Right. But I don't want you to agree for the sake of agreement. I'm, I'm for not, agreement, I'm, yeah? I'm not going to yeah. agree. I, that's why I think we're kind of going in circles. Because you, you're saying that I'm saying that something is going to be always explained by something else and you can't go on indefinitely. But then you get to Allah and then you get to again the point who created Allah, don't you? You know? But you're right, we're going in circles because I have made, dealt with that point. I said, if something created Allah, now, let me give you an example. Let's say Allah is created by, by another entity, yeah? hypothetically. That entity, where did it come from? Why is the explanation? I don't know, you tell me, you're the one who's uh, believing but the, in Allah. This, this is the argument we're making, right? If you say by default that there is something else external to Allah that gave rise to Allah, that's an explanation for Allah's existence, right? If that something is an explanation, it's either that thing will have an explanation 
or will be something that doesn't require explanation. Correct? If it kept being something that requires explanation, nothing will ever exist. Then by necessity, we'll have to reach a point where we have something which doesn't have an explanation. And that's what we call Allah. Why can't just the innate fabric of the universe not require an explanation? Because the innate fabric of the universe is arranged in a certain way and it has restrictions outside, therefore it requires an explanation outside itself. Point is, look, I'll be honest with you, right? The answers are there, and I believe they're repeated many times. You don't want to accept it, that's your position, right? Because we're not forcing someone to believe something or not to believe it. But the rational basis is there. People have been listening, and they can see that, that, that there is no logical reasoning to reject it. Because the questions you asked, we answered. We, uh, the question you asked, we answered. Like twice, right? <laughs> But the point By is, the way, this yeah. question of who created God is not actually a question. Because when a question is asked, a question has to have a variable uh, uh, answers. It has to have a, a yes, answer. Yeah. yeah, and also to, to ask the question of who How created that okay. created yeah. is a meaningless question to you. Yeah. So when you ask a question, it has to have a meaningful to you. Why is it a meaningful? Uh, uh, I mean? uh, he's making a valid point. I don't use that because a lot of people. They run away from it. Yeah. If they really want to argue with you, they will run away from it. But the point is this. If I say to you, how many wings wings do you have from one to ten? Is that a no. meaningful Which question? But that's not the answer. I said from one to ten. Something's going on over there. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Fight. That's fine. There's always fights. Yeah. I'm saying from one to ten. Yeah, I, I think you've made loads of good points and stuff. But, okay, that's uh, fine. In the end, in the end, what I can say, in the end, what I can say is this, right? The message of Islam is the following, right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that is upon us to deliver the message. It's only upon the person to deliver the message of the Prophet, right? It's not upon anyone to convince. We believe the convincing comes from the Creator. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who places. Acceptance or not acceptance in your heart. And based on what? Based on your sincerity and based on the goodness within you. If you're really showing sincerity and goodness within you, Allah promises that He will always reward you with belief and acceptance, right? Which is based on reasoning and, and understanding. That's in the hands of the Creator, not in the hands of the creation. Prophet Muhammad himself, right? والسلام, could not guide his uncle. His uncle protected him for years. And he kept on his deathbed trying to invite him to the religion. But he died as a disbeliever. And then Allah told the Prophet, you don't guide those you love. Allah is the one who guides whom he will. So I can give you reasoning, I can give you arguments, I can give you explanations, but I cannot give you guidance. I want to make that point clear, right? In the end, the message of Islam is very simple. There is one creator. That creator is transcendent, indivisible, right? All-knowing, all-powerful, supreme, loving, and in the same time, just. He created creation, and he gave the creation from his mercy the chance to have eternal paradise. Or to choose to rebel against God and to have the consequences of rebelling against God. And that's a choice of the individual. That's the test of this life. And then he sent prophets and revelation. And he only commanded us to tell you about the revelation. Have you read the Quran? Only a little bit. But you have one. Mate, you made, you, you have one. Speaker. No, I'll leave. I'll leave. I'll leave. I'm not going to keep you more than you are. <laughs> Like, I'm, over there, I'm not going to keep you more than you are, but my point is... I didn't really want a whole discussion to start with, to be honest. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He's just, I don't know, we always going no, no, on. No, no, it's a beautiful discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's sure. a lot to, and at least we sparked something in you today. Yeah. To yeah, investigate this like, And I hope I didn't offend, offend you guys in any way, but I was saying that was not the intention. very admirably, and I hope so, I hope so, I hope so. And I hope you investigate further in the future. Like, don't take what I say, go investigate it, right? Like sincerely sit down a bit, you're not going to lose anything by reading the Quran, you know? Yeah, At least yeah, you will yeah. know something about these Muslims, the people, you will know what they think about, right? You will understand yeah. their behavior and what they, how they think, at least, right? You're never going to lose if you read the Quran, right? You're always winning. So just spend some time reading and looking at the evidences that are out there. And if you want evidences, which I have not presented because we were talking about God, evidences for Islam, I'm here. You can come anytime and ask, right? And I can right. present evidences, you know? Pleasure okay, talking, nice talking to you. Talking to you. you nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. What do you nice think? Talking. Your name, yeah, because I, I've been speaking to him majority yeah, yeah. most no, of the no, time. No, it's been interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're a good speaker. I can, I can tell you talk to a lot of people about it. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you guys uh, investigate. And and, yeah, and, and and again, I apologize if I made any no, like no, uh, uh, root points or things like that. Uh, no, give them a gift. Would one you one like one. to have a gift? Uh, yeah, it's a free gift. I'll both give it to you. Let me see if I can share my pockets. Yeah. MashaAllah. It's been a while I haven't seen him. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. The brother has came at the right time. MashaAllah. <laughs> 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 it's probably one fight.
And police is coming, it's definitely a fight or something like that. Still going on. There's always fights in here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Here you go. Thanks, man. No problem. Uh, can you... The Jesus Muhammad one is... Give me one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barakallah. Just come now, inshallah. Just take it. Barakallah. Take two the chapter. Small leaf, leaf. Small leaf, leaf. Yeah, no problem. Choose, choose the chapter. Yeah. yeah. And then yes. within 114, choose the chapter. Yeah. Uh, and they are agnostic, more, more agnostic. It's the word of the priest. She wrote the book about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The book is Muhammad. Her name is Carla. Maybe you're gonna check that woman. She made the decision. She's not Muslim, but she gave the opinion. I read that book. It gives you a good key to the Quran, like a great. You mean Karen Armstrong? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has a book. I actually was looking at that book the other day on Muhammad. I was in the bookshop. I didn't buy it in the end. That's a sign for you. It's a sign for you now. Yeah. You're looking for a sign, he brought the sign for you. <laughs> he brought the sign for you. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. 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 Alright. See you around guys. Yeah. Yeah. See you around. Thank you.